There's been a lot of hype about tech companies like NVIDIA and Supermicro benefiting from the AI boom. But could one of your best opportunities be outside of the tech sector? Our next guest says data centers could face the most ferocious investment inflection in decades. Says we're still in relatively early days. Steve Tusa of J.P. Morgan joins me now. Steve, welcome. So I'm, I'm looking at Vertiv Holdings here, which I think is a name that you like the most. And it was at like 15 a year ago, and now it's at 93. I mean, it, it's practically like an NVIDIA or Supermicro itself at this point. Why do you think it's got more room to run? Uh, first of all, how's it going? Um, thanks good, for good. having me yeah. uh, th th this afternoon. Um, uh, I think you use the term ferocious. We're kind of running out of superlatives when it comes to what we see in data center. A lot of these electrical equipment companies that I cover uh, have already benefited from manufacturing onshoring, energy transition, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, but the data center kicker that we're seeing now and the amount of electrical product that goes in to manage the power that these things are going to require um, is absolutely staggering. Uh, and Frankly, we've really only been in this for a quarter as far as the orders these companies are seeing. Um, as far as Vertiv is concerned, their orders were up 60 percent in the first quarter. This is seven billion dollar company. It's not small. Um, they've already been growing pretty strongly over the last couple of years. But I think it's important to keep in mind where this company came from. They missed numbers pretty dramatically back uh, about 18 months, two years ago when supply constraints came along. And so they were making literally no money for a quarter back then. The stock was at, um, you know, we upgraded at 14 and it went to eight. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, a bit disturbing at that stage of the game. But keep in mind that, you know, people were thinking they weren't going to make much money at that stage. So uh, here we are uh, a couple of years later and the consensus prevailing uh, number is, you know, just north of three dollars. So the stock back then was effectively trading at, you know, three times earnings. Okay. Uh, so we have to keep that in perspective when we think about where it's come from. Um, so I, I, I still think there's a lot of room to run, given where these earnings are going. So this this reminds me, this setup reminds me of the chip manufacturing business, though, and its boom-bust cycles. Because just talking to the, the CEO of AWS, Adam Solipsky, this week, and he was saying they're building out, investing in data center. Of course, Microsoft, Alphabet, Google doing the same thing. Many others. I mean, at a certain point, won't there be so much supply that either people decide, OK, well, um, I can go with the hyperscalers and the hyperscalers will have their own economics. Sure, they use some of these data center providers, but they also have their own facilities. And then we get into a question of during a bus cycle, who can run their data centers most efficiently and survive and consolidate? Sure. I mean, like uh, we, we all die in the end. I mean, every cycle <laughs> comes comes to a close. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a cyclical capital goods analyst, so I I totally get that. But um, we're, we're very, very early in this process. I mean, if, if you're telling me that six months from now, somebody's going to come back and say AI doesn't work, then, you know, I, I, I don't only think the data center industry is in trouble, but uh, the, probably the market's in trouble if that's the case. Um, you know, I'm not smart enough to make that call. I just know that this is really the first quarter of strong demand on this front and the pipelines these companies see and the field work we've done uh, to validate those pipelines. I mean, there are estimates that the data center capacity in this country is going to go from 20 gigawatts to 60 gigawatts over a four to five year time period and that there are pipelines and money flowing in to support those pipelines um that validate that case we're not assuming that um and that's installed base so keep in mind these companies revenues are driven by new additions which are running i don't know three to four gigawatts a year so just think about those numbers and we're literally in the first quarter of this so okay i mean you know these these cycles tend to be six five six years not one quarter. So we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes, for sure. Just give but me I a, still think we're, like, very early on. Just give me a couple more names in the space. And we've spent a lot of time talking about just the one. But what are a couple of the other names that you like after Vertiv? Yeah, they, they, there are some, you know, kind of crafty laterals here that uh, that that we can play this with. Uh, Eaton is definitely one of those. They not only benefit from uh, the build-out directly in data centers, but also in the grid. Uh, they're also benefiting from manufacturing reshoring here in the U.S. with semi and EV plants. 
Uh, and, and the other ways to do it would be on the uh, HVAC side. Mm. Um, these data centers require a ridiculous amount of cooling. Johnson Controls has about 8 to 9 percent of sales. Uh, Train Technologies is another one that has some really good exposure here. And All then right. Hubble, um, which is mostly grid. So you're talking about getting the power from the utilities to, uh, to the data centers.